Hi, I'm John Sapp, Fire Chief for the Belton Fire Department, and uh, boy, it's hard to know that, uh, hard to think that a year's went by, but we've, we've had a lot of things going on with promotions internally, with adding uh, staff uh, to our crews, so we're going to go through quite a bit of that to see um, see where we've gone and where we're going with uh, service for the city of Belton and improving that service and keeping it very consistent. This year, a big project that uh, both police and fire worked on was an upgrade to the computer-aided dispatching system. Um, it was a large undertaking from a planning and organizing standpoint. Um, it's been uh, been released. We're using it now. It's been a tremendous update to what we were used to in the past from a technology standpoint for the fire department, um, getting mobile data terminals in the trucks, getting information to us quicker, the ability to uh, see the notes that the dispatchers are putting in. Uh, so very large project, a little bit expensive, but it's, it's, it's paying off. It's been out there a, a couple months now, and we're still learning as we go, but it's been a, a very good improvement, I think, and it will continue to improve the services that we're giving to citizens. From a community engagement standpoint, we, we continue. We've, we've really done a good job with interacting with our public, but the thing that's happened over the last few years is this fun little competition with the police and fire department uh, and collecting school supplies, and it was another uh, successful year both to get everything they needed for the students and to engage in some back and forth with our police department. But in addition to that, we have a lot of things going on. They had the, the, for the, uh, the Battle of the Badges, which is a softball tournament between local uh, emergency services, police departments, fire departments, and Raymore and Belton. Uh, there was another successful year of that. And then our other guys are really just getting out there. We had uh, six, I think, participants in the 9-11 stair climb. Uh, we've got one group of folks that are, are hitting the 5Ks. I don't know how many they did last year, but just on their off time, they're getting together and, and supporting each other and doing 5Ks. And a lot of credit out to, to Chief Craddafill for that. He's really been the driver of that. And so I'm super proud of how our folks get out and, um, and get with the public, mix up with the public, um, and, and just get involved in the community. As we, as we think about the future, we're looking at still continuing to increase those medic levels we talked about. And over the next 18 months or so, we're going to hope to get another eight to nine paramedics. Um, it's important for us. We have a lot of, of uh, growth in the city of Belton that we're trying to keep up with. There's a lot of anticipation going. And so that looks like adding fire stations, which means bringing in more people. And so right now we're focusing hard on how we train up those people to fill the gaps. We've got a lot of uh, retirements oncoming in the next several years, and so we're, we're working on mentoring uh, and preparing our folks inside and trying to make sure that the troops that are here are ready to fill in those gaps. Along with our medics, we were able to increase staffing. So now there are 16 people assigned to each shift for, for the fire department, and so this was nice because we were able to increase our minimum staffing to a level that we now staff three ambulances every day guaranteed. On days that we have uh, more than uh, 15 or more people here, we're running four ambulances. Again, one of those things that's satisfying a need that we've had to keep enough ambulances in, uh, in the city to, to cover all the calls without using our mutual aid partners. Well, thanks for your time, everybody. I want to close out and just, uh, just say that it's been a great year. We're looking forward to uh, another great year after this. And I really want to make sure I show the appreciation for the citizens of Belton. They are always very supportive of this fire department. Always hear very positive um, back from you guys. So keep that up. We, we will um, keep, keep your support up. Uh, you, you do that through um, communications with us. You do that through supporting the public safety sales tax. It helps offer us a lot of the, the funds that are able to get the new equipment that we get and do our training. Hi, I'm Scott Lyons. I'm the police chief for Belton Police Department. And I'm here to tell you about initiatives that, that we're very proud about in 2024. I'm here to talk to you about some of the things that we're looking forward to in 2025, and then also the things that we are thankful for. Several initiatives that we're proud about uh, 2023 into 2024 around the police department. Number one is the ability of the police department to secure a grant for the Mental Health Co-Responder Program. Uh, this is a program that's been activated um, since January of 2020, uh, 2024. Uh, we are in the cycle of applying for the second year of this grant, which is a, gonna be a two-year cycle. So we'll have secured an additional two years. And so this program so far has helped us and police officers, but most importantly, the community in regards to helping people with mental health crisis. Um, those people that are in mental health crisis 
We're trying to get them directly to the resources that is desperately needed so they don't come in contact with the criminal justice system, most um, poignantly the police department. And it increases our ability to actually focus on other things other than trying to put somebody that is in crisis into the criminal justice system where they might become lost in it. But we've had a number, in fact, uh, 84 uh, attempted suicides and su suicidal ideations that we've been able to ses successfully um, intervene in and get them to additional resources. Uh, our co-responder has been active in over 70 cases uh, where uh, the community has had individuals that have needed help. And so this has allowed our officers once again to concentrate on other things. Some of the other initiatives that we've been involved in this year was uh, we tried to reduce or impact the number of thefts in the communities, uh, most notably larceny from vehicles, uh, shoplifting in retail stores, and even stolen autos. And to, to this end, this year, we are down in all three categories. Um, one of the things that helps us in regards to larceny uh, from vehicles uh, is uh, first and foremost, crime prevention. I want to say thank you to the citizens of this community because we have gotten out there on social media asking for people to be vigilant in crime prevention. In fact, the hashtag 9pm routine is a, is a social media campaign that we have been uh, trying to introduce to this community and it's become successful. And that is, is we're trying to get citizens to be more aware of locking uh, their doors at night, making sure their garage door is down. There's no way that someone can access a garage in the middle of the night and then make it inside the residence. Um, it helps prevent car thefts from inside garages or even burglaries where people are sleeping in their homes. And so the other part of this campaign is, is that if you're going to uh, have a car that you park outside, we ask that you secure it. Any kind of valuables, especially uh, electronics, currency, any type of um, credit cards, that type of stuff, and even handguns need to be inside the residence and not inside an unlocked car where thieves can have an opportunity to steal those things. Uh, one of the things that we've also been involved in is we use our license plate reader system for our officers. They use this to activate or alert themselves to stolen autos that come into our community or stolen autos leaving our community and it helps us in our investigations unit uh, try to track down those individuals. We've had a great number of success stories this year in regards to curbing shoplifting. In fact, many of our retail businesses have been very helpful, helping us become more proactive. In fact, we've had two operations where we specifically targeted weekends with high retail sales and we've worked with loss prevention at many of the retailers in this area to try to curb thefts. In fact, we've had uh, a success story. One of our number one retail stores last year has actually fallen off the top five as far as shoplifting this year because of initiatives and getting engaged with each other and doing a collaboration. And so that has been very successful. In 2025, the Belton Police Department, our mission is to reduce crime, improve traffic safety, and enhance the quality of life of all citizens. And to that end, our number one goal is to reduce crime. We will continue to have uh, those uh, crimes that affect our community the most and are gonna be top concerns of ours. Um, but we also have made uh, the priority of training our officers so they can improve the quality of their services. One of those things is, is the use of technology in doing a better job uh, of protecting this community. And we do that with our association with the FBI Regional Forensics Computer Laboratory, uh, which we actually have a person attached to that task force. It comes with also our use of using our license plate reader system in the city to identify criminals that have been flagged that are career criminals in stolen vehicles or their own vehicles, and then getting into the area and trying to stop those individuals, whether it's before 
or after or during when they're committing crime, and that's been very successful. And we do a fantastic job of working with our law enforcement partners throughout the Kansas City metropolitan area. Some of the other initiatives that we're very proud of and will keep continue is, I talked earlier about the mental health co-responder program. Uh, we are committed to, to continually utilizing that program to try to reduce call, calls for service involving those in mental crisis but getting them to the resources where they can get the help that they desperately need. As police chief, I want to thank the community for their continued support, um, whether it's letters, uh, emails, uh, even telephone calls that we get from you in regards to how well you think we are impacting the issues that you care about uh, in this community.